I have your early advance spoilers for April 8 to 12, Monday through Friday. Naturally, we have a ton of JSONN, JSON, JSONN, and a little more JSONN. We have large, big items to unpack from Brennan, some Deck, some Carly, some Sunlight, some Valentin, and some Anna. I can't wait to tell you everything about it. In case you haven't already, kindly select subscribe to ensure that you don't overlook any of our updates. As is customary for the early edition, I also gave you an update on next week's spoilers and kind of went over what's going to happen the remainder of this week. On Wednesday, April 3, Finn will open up to Elizabeth Weber about his fast-declining father, Gregory Chase. Finn is upset, heartbroken, and frustrated, and he plans to discuss all of that with his girlfriend. And at last, Sasha and Cotty discuss their emotions. Now that she is not the face of deceit and has more time on her hands, it appears that she visits the stables to meet him, hang out, and engage in horsey activities. Additionally, Blaze discusses Christina's new position as the face of deceit with her. Naturally, though, she is only half the deceitful face, which is amusing because they will ultimately have two deceitful faces. And the height of dishonesty is when you confront someone face to face. Thus, it's somewhat intriguing. I believe they will use that in their advertising, and I hope they use a little smart wordplay. That seems like a pretty charming idea. Brooklyn and Chase, Quartermain visits Dante, who is still in the hospital. They ask for his help in order to ensure that their wedding takes place as soon as possible since they desire an early wedding date. At the hospital, Tracy and Stella are once again fighting. Recall when Tracy Poo Poo gave in to Stella's demands for her to receive the complimentary checkup that all board members are entitled to, and Stella then angrily yelled at her, telling her she had a luxury since she had access to health care that she was not using. Thus, we arrive at Thursday, April 4, when Sasha is demonstrating her culinary prowess. That's probably for Cotty. That seems extremely adorable to me. In order to make sure Heather Weber doesn't get poisoned again, Kevin and Laura Collins go to General Hospital to see how she's doing with her hip replacement. I sincerely hope that she is sent straight back to prison and that her hip replacement is not the cause of her terrible character. She has long since been a terrible person. Do not misunderstand me. I adore her role as a movie villain, you frequent listeners. No, I cherished Franco. Eva is appealing to me. I enjoy the negative individuals. I like Heather Weber, but I don't think her joint replacement was a mistake, thus she shouldn't get away with it. Curtis is present to console Trina, his daughter. Since she is certain that Jason is the one who shot her father, I can see how angry she is about the accusations against him being dropped. I'm curious to find out if Curtis shares his opinions with her. I wonder if Joss discovers that Dex was interviewing to be a police officer. She seems shocked about something right now. That could be really awesome. Terry Randolph returns on Thursday, and she offers Tracy some guidance that will carry over into Friday, April 5. As Sonny and Natalia become closer to one another, they become more acquainted. Natalia is a terrific mom, of course, and I don't believe Ava will find that very appealing, if there's anything sly about it. Brooklyn. Mom Lois Cirillo is helping Quartermain through her wedding dress issue. Jocelyn and Christina are arguing again, and this time, Jocelyn picks out Jagger. Not only am I curious to see if Jagger knows that Jason is protecting Carly, but I'm also curious to see if Jagger is aware that Drew and Carly are no longer together. It's all fascinating stuff. Danny Morgan is causing concern for Sam McCall. She refuses to NAC with Jason. Danny desires to visit Jason. Next week, I anticipate further information on that. Anna has been released from Pentonville Prison. Furthermore, she is asking Jack Brennan about Pikmin. She's curious as to who is in charge of it, and I'm wondering whether he could hint at anything. When he discovered that Valentin had ensured there was a deaf driver, it nearly seemed as though he was admitting something to the prison transport driver. Is that a risk to security? 
like he wouldn't be able to hear if Brennan was doing stuff, therefore he would be the sole driver. It's quite fascinating. The fact that they appear to be using a deaf actor excites me. I'm just wondering whether there are typically any secondary officers in real life, or if there are any officers who are deaf, for that matter. Although I've never seen a deaf police officer, I found it really noteworthy that they were so welcoming. Okay, so that brings us to the, to the week end, of so April 8 to 12. Down the roll with a Additionally, I want to Dex Heller appears to be deserving of a badge, and as an intriguing side note, Dex actor Evan Hofer revealed to Soap Digest that he cried when he saw the script, which essentially depicts DEX and Sonny's breakup, because he was so devastated that Morris Bernard was no longer his main scene partner. He claimed to have sobbed while out in public, which I find quite endearing. At Pikmin, Valentine's Day may be running out because Jason, Jagger, and Anna are all after him. They simply are unaware that they are going after him because they are unsure about the new leader. Anna is aware that someone has assumed control. And because Anna is questioning Brennan, I wonder whether he'll be willing to make a deal to give up assent. He might turn against Valentin, but doing so would undoubtedly endanger his life. I don't think Valentin would think twice about eliminating him. And he's allowed him to survive thus far. So let's see how it turns out. As Ava is gradually becoming more accustomed to Sunny's company, Sunny is still causing discord with Carly, Jason, and Michael. Naturally, Sunny is unaware of this, but Jason has promised to keep watching out for him. Naturally, as I had feared, we now know that Jason is defending Carly. They get all that Rico stuff on her, which suggests that during her brief reign as a mob boss, she was a little sloppier than the ordinary mobsters. Sonny and Jason, meanwhile, have been involved in mob activities for years without being the subject of a file. Jagger was aware that Carly was the ideal person to put pressure on when dealing with Jason Morgan. Sonny's mental decline continues, and I have a feeling that learning that Dex is going to become a police officer will be a huge blow to him. And given his insane state, I wonder whether he will threaten the newest police officer from the PCPD. Dex, provided he accepts the job offer. When we have the complete spoilers next week, we'll know more about it. Brooklyn Quarter also indicates that a wedding is about to take place. When I receive the complete list of reasons why Ned Quartermain shouldn't be returning to lead her down the aisle, I anticipate some spoilers. Soon, Dante ought to be recovering from his hospital stay at home with Sam, showing him affection while harboring unresolved anger towards Jason for endangering Danny. Carly's gap from sunlight gets bigger, and I wonder if Jason will ever acknowledge that he's covering for Carly, or if he will at all, like Michael or someone else. And I'm wondering if Nina will have a different outlook now that Drew has taught her the valuable lesson about the futility of revenge. In addition, Cameron Matheson hosts a game show as a side gig, but if you see someone creating clickbait about how this indicates he's leaving General Hospital yet again, don't follow them. Without a lull in his efforts, he has already filmed more than 100 episodes of General Hospital. Thus, it appears that there are no snags, and his tenure continued as planned. Fine. Thus, in light of the significant eclipse preemption, ABC News will be broadcasting the eclipse special nationwide. The coverage will begin at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern even if the actual eclipse doesn't occur until about 237. Therefore, it appears that there shouldn't be any episode at all on Monday, the 8th, in that Eastern time zone. And after that, an Encore episode is typically shown in the other time zones, where it's prearranged, and once more, I'll have more information once I have access to the complete roster of weekly spoilers. However, I would not anticipate coverage in the eastern or central time zones, and in all other time zones, it's most likely going to be, you guessed it, a rerun of some kind. I'm quite looking forward to the eclipse. For it, I'm actually traveling to Niagara Falls, New York. I'm also rather thrilled. Maybe 10 years ago, I was in the middle of another amazing eclipse, and it was amazing. 
It's one of the coolest sights I've ever seen to be standing exactly in the middle of the midline. I'll update you all on it when I get back, but for now, I'm heading to Niagara Falls. But I'll continue to podcast. So, regardless of what I'm doing, return seven days a week without being interrupted. Kindly click the subscribe button. Please leave a comment below indicating what you're looking forward to seeing, if you haven't already. Additionally, don't forget to watch your DVR for any Monday preemptions, as they can interfere with subsequent programming. Therefore, you should normally verify your scheduled recording for the following day and then remove the rerun. As a kind of insurance, it can occasionally be helpful to set a manual recorder or to be ready to view it on Hulu. If it is not picked up by your DVR, okay, that's all I have to offer you. I appreciate you listening so much. Stay tuned for more on General Hospital tomorrow.